on our digital block at this point, um, we are going to do a right hallux lateral matricectomy, which is a bolsing of the nail section of the lateral border. And then we're going to use a um, phenol acid, which is a chemical, to help burn the root or the baby cells, the matrix cells of the, of the nail corner, okay? So I've already done the digital block. I've already cleaned up the toe. Um, the current plan, like I said, is to do the matricectomy. But if I notice that there's too much infection process in here, we're gonna cancel the matricectomy and just do a traditional avulsion. The reason is because if you have too much inflammation and swelling, it can affect help um, the efficacy of the phenol acid. And that's what we're trying to avoid, okay? So the first thing I've already done is I cleaned with HippoCleanse, which is a surgical scrub. Um, you do not have to clean the toe prior to a procedure, but I am a little anal retentive, so I always clean the toe prior to procedure. You can use alcohol, betadine, HippoCleanse, anything that would be a surgical scrub, okay? So we um, like to use uh, Band-Aids to help cut, cut off the blood flow to the toe. Um, but there are actual toe tourniquets that you can use. They usually are a green color and you just slide them down the toe, okay? Now in this particular case, this patient is um, a 16 year old um, who uh, is an athlete runs a lot so it's very common in that age group to have these because as they grow and their shoe sizes change and things like that they uh, don't necessarily want to give up their favorite shoes <laughs> yeah that's so true <laughs> you get nervous again huh? yeah, i'm just waiting so I, I have small hands so i have to use both hands to uh, <laughs> clamp off a big toe <laughs> and sometimes i do have to pull out a, an extra rubber band so don't be surprised if i do that all right, now he had um, some extra granulation tissue, which is why it's bleeding a little bit more. And that's common as well, okay? And then you can tell the way he's been cutting his toenail is not necessarily at the best angle, uh, which is straight. So the first thing that we're gonna use is a spatula, okay? So you have a two-ended spatula. Um, some people can use a freer elevator, um, anything that's an elevator. And what you wanna do is you wanna free the nail folds from around the nail border, okay? Now with a matrixectomy, it's also a cosmetic procedure. So I don't wanna go all the way over here to take off the nail. That would be stupid because that would leave me with that much nail. So we're gonna try to aim for about that much so we still have what looks like a cosmetically normal nail, okay? So you should be able to just wisp right around like that. Um, we use a nail cutter to start followed by a beaver blade. So now we're gonna go down the border. And again, you're trying to find that, follow that cosmetic line you just made, okay? And you go down to about as far as you can reach. So there's our initial cut. Always check the beaver blade before you use it. Beaver blade's gonna follow that same line. Now, do you see how I turned my, my blade inward? One of the reasons why I do that is because if I go this way, or if I say too straight, it's very common for patients to have a little residual nail right here that they'll feel during the healing process. So one of my techniques is, is just to slightly angle it that way, like that, okay? And then that cleans up the last little bit of the cut, okay? And you try not to, but it's not the end of the world if you do, slip the nail, the skin right here, okay? Then we use a straight hemostat to remove the, the nail. You wanna go all the way down as far as you can to get that root, okay? Clamp it off, and then you're gonna twist and pull out. And that is your nail piece, okay? And that way you can see that properly. There you go. Then we follow it up with a curette. Okay. And we make sure we don't have any residual nail pieces in there. The other thing I do is I look for any um, soft nail, um, any dead skin, you know, so you pull out a lot of stuff when you're going through this. It's okay to be aggressive on the side, but watch how aggressive you are back underneath here, especially if you're not doing what's the matrixectomy. If I'm doing the matrixectomy, I can scrape all I want back here because I'm destroying it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if I'm doing a simple one, it's a, it's a light wisp just for anything that doesn't sound right or feel right. And then over here I can to bride this as much as I want, okay? And here you can see where that inflammation tissue pouch was, okay? 
that will bleed for several days. Some patients will cauterize, be cauterized with either silver nitrate or in this case, I'm gonna use the phenol just to burn that down a little bit so that it doesn't grow back and cause any other additional issues. Okay, all right. Looks pretty clean. I don't see any pus in there, so that makes me happy. It's also a pet peeve of mine. Patients always come back and ask me to cut that piece of nail for them because they're, they're afraid to do it. So I'm just doing it now. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So the first thing I always do is make sure that I have a minimally bloody field that I'm going to use because if I have too much blood pouring out of here, it'll wash out the phenol acid and nobody wants that. Okay. Because then your procedure will fail. 